Doug. Join us as we follow the moon. Today, we are at a very unique experience. It's called Biosphere 2. And if it's not something you've heard of before, we're gonna show you around the facility today. When you uh, go into that, you are asked to download an app. That's the reason for the earbuds. And it's a self-guided audio and visual tour that appears on your phone as you go through. So we're gonna go through, take the tour, show you around and let you see what an amazing facility this is and how it was used. So come along. Now, Biosphere 2 is located in the Santa Catalina Mountains at the Sonora Desert, actually just north of Tucson, Arizona. And the University of Arizona acquired this property in the 1970s. And by 1984, it was sold to Space Biosphere Ventures. And they're the company that built Biosphere 2, as you see in the picture. Now, the three acre facility was broken ground on in, in uh, 1987 and took four years to complete. And the great thing with this, it's not only an experiment on being able to self-preserve the human race, but the nature around it is amazing. There's deer all over the property. There's javelina. Um, you never know what you're gonna see walking through the property. Now the very first part that you come to is where the test module is, which was used before Biosphere was built. And it also has uh, the analytical lab uh, and it also the arched buildings there were their mission control where they constantly monitored uh, the structure while it was being used as a Biosphere. Now the project was to put eight people in it and have it be fully self-sustaining for two years. And the one thing they didn't count on was the rich soils had enough um, microbials in it that they were using oxygen and giving off CO2 also. So at about 500 days, the oxygen level was getting low. They had to uh, add oxygen to it. But when that was completed, the, the rest of the mission went on for the full two years. The building is still being used today for science experiments. Uh, once Columbia University bowed out of the project, University of Arizona took it back over. They, it's powered by solar. Um, this was the actual uh, airlock that they went in and it sealed the building airtight. Today, we're going to go in through these doors up into the upper level and learn a little bit more about this structure. This was their dining area, which is right off of their kitchen. With eight of them on there, every eight days was your day to take care of the meals. Now we're going up the staircase and on into the facility and the next thing we come to is their living area they all each had a two-bedroom apartment the downstairs that you see here was their living area the spiral staircase in the corner went up to their sleeping area they were allowed to decorate it any way they wanted to Now this area is called LEO. It's a Landscape Evolution Observatory. It's filled with basalt rock, which has now grown moss over the top of it. And it's used to track how water runs beneath the surface. This is from underneath, so you can see the structure. It holds uh, all the weight of that basalt rock. And this was the inside of that airlock where they first came into the unit. So they first came in right there. The next area that we go into is the orchard. This is what they call their sweet shop because there was no refined sugars inside the biosphere. So they used the, the fruit to sweeten. They have figs, guava, orange, lime, lemon, grapefruit, bananas, and coffee 
all growing in this section. Now from here, we're gonna step outside the building and the tour does go inside and goes outside. So dress in layers, have water with you and just be prepared. Those three glass domes over there you see are the ones over Leo. So each of those have one of those large metal trays Now you see those uh, cone shaped objects over there. Those are uh, for the electricity generating, they're the cooling towers. And those uh, rounded top uh, item areas are the energy center where water is heated and water is cooled to regulate the temperature of the inside of the biosphere. There are two of these called lungs, and they have a 16 ton aluminum disc that changes the amount of air that that lung holds so that it keeps the glass structure from either exploding from being too much air pressure or imploding from being too little. So those lungs act as a way to regulate that temperature or the, the air pressures. Now the first area we go inside this building is the coastal fog desert. And it's made up like what you would find in the Baja Peninsula, as well as other places around the world. Um, places that are near the Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer. And this place in the spring is supposed to be absolutely amazing because it brings forth all of the desert florals. This one was designed to help produce additional oxygen during the winter months. And you can see person working over there. They're, they're constantly working on uh, all of the, the plant life and everything in through here. And these plants were not put in like to be an arboretum or just to be there for, for the beauty. But these were what created the oxygen that they, they lived on and, and filtered out the CO2. Now the next area is the thorn scrub. And this area was designed to be more of a supplement to oxygen supplies in the summer months. Now the next area is the mangrove area. And the mangroves uh, grow in brackish water. These were actually moved from Florida into biosphere. And there is the brackish water. There's young fish that, that flourish in there. The next area is the lower savanna. And you'll, here you'll find a lot of uh, papaya, avocado, pearlberry, and there's even coffee plants. Here you can even see the, the coffee beans on the plant. Now this is their ocean, and it is the world's largest experimental ocean, over 700,000 gallons of salt water. It has its own wave wall. And originally, uh, this was a tropical coral reef. And when Columbia University was using this, they were doing experiments with what happened with rising CO2 levels in the water, made some cutting edge uh, experiments but when they pulled out of that, the coral died over time. 
and is just about to be replaced with new coral coming in. This is the upper savanna area and this was originally done to provide sea pods and fruit for birds that were to be introduced in time, but that project never completed. Now from the end of the ocean, we'll go through a door and we'll go into the tropical rainforest. There were originally 400 species of plants put in here as an experiment, not knowing which ones would flourish. Out of that, there's still over 100 species that are growing and flourishing in here. You'll also find aphids, roaches, ants, spiders. There's a waterfall coming down that rock wall over there that feeds into a small pond and a stream. And it's even set up so that seasonally it will flood just like it would in the actual rainforest. As we go to leave, here in their little garden, we find another deer. I think we must have seen four or five of them on our visit. And they are very, very tame. Well, we've just completed our tour of the facility. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's absolutely fascinating how this was done and all the things that they thought of, like the, the lung and the changing in the air pressure uh, and the plants to create oxygen. But until they actually did it, they didn't know for sure how it was all going to turn out. Some were great successes. Some of them needed to be readjusted as time went along. But with that, if you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, watch for the dot at the end of the video. If you tap that, you'll know I uh, get the ring, get to ring the notification bell and you'll know when every one of our videos come out. And thank you for following us as we follow the movie.